Welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, I'm going to show you how to be a better observer. Whenever I'm making observations and recording them in my journal, I intentionally change my view. Sometimes I zoom in, I get really close with my subject. And at this range, I can pick up all sorts of little details. Then, I intentionally move back further away from the subject and I look around and I get the big picture. So what we want to do in our journals is record both the details and the big picture. While exploring a small creek during a heat wave, I made a curious discovery. I found bees honeybees clustered at the rocks at the base of a small waterfall and being showered by the spray. So I immediately got out my journal and got to work. And I used the strategy of changing the scale of my observations to see so much more. I started drawing the bees at life size. At this scale, I could see the angle that they held their wings up away from the wet rocks and how they clustered in small groups, but this was only part of the story. So I backed up and I drew a little map showing the creek, the waterfall, the stones, and where the bees were concentrated near the waterfall. And then I zoomed in. Looking at the bees through close focus binoculars, I could see the details of their anatomy and the fine drops of water clinging to their hairy little bodies. And at this range, I discovered that they were actually licking the rocks, dragging their little brown bee tongues across the stones. Let's take a look at how you can change scale on your journal page. Perhaps you're drawing a plant. Start with a drawing that is exactly, or as exactly as you can, life-size. So if I've found a little plant growing, and here it is, perhaps some basal leaves down here, little flower up in here. I'm going to start by drawing this as close to life-size as I can. Pictures help me include some information. I'm also going to add in some written notes, so describing parts of it. But very quickly, I'm going to discover that at this size, it is hard for me to show a lot of the information that I can see. So if there's some structure on it, perhaps the flower is interesting, I can take that part and zoom in. So on the same page, I'm going to draw a little circle around this flower here, blow that up over here. I'm going to draw a big circle over here to match the little circle. And in this big circle, I can do a detailed drawing of the structure of that flower. So any part of this that has, has, has details that don't really fit at this scale, I want to enlarge those. And for this, you can even get, get out a little hand lens, you can get out magnifiers, you start looking at an object at that kind of scale, you will see all sorts of details that you couldn't get into your original sketch. So notice already I've got two different scales, the life size and I've zoomed in. You can actually have multiple zoom ins. Let's say there's little teeth around this little um, this sort of a serrated edge on the leaf, but I can't really show that at this scale. I can just draw a little box around part of my leaf here and I'll come out to another little zoom in box here. And I can show that that leaf has a serrated edge. That's zooming in. But I also want to zoom out. When I get further back away from the plant, I'll start to notice 
what sorts of things it's growing near. I might make a map, or I can make a little side view diagram just to show how that plant fits with other things in its environment. So let's say this plant was growing at the base of some oak trees. I'll start kind of drawing in some oak trunks here. This will be a little side view. I'm going to draw myself in here just for, for scale. And right there under the oaks, there's going to be a patch of these flowers. And I'll write in some notes that it is growing in the shade of an oak tree um, about half a meter away from the trunk. Draw a little box around this habitat information. And you see, on my page, by intentionally getting closer in some places, zooming back in others, and other places just drawing something life-size, it gives me more tools in my toolkit to be able to, to describe, to play with, to observe whatever it is that I'm seeing. Knowing that my observations are different at different scales, it makes it part of my regular practice to get closer, to get further away. By zooming in and zooming out on anything that I see, I'm going to train myself to be a better observer and a better nature journaler. Here are my final notes from my bee observation session. This is a cross section, a side view diagram showing the creek kind of cascading down into the pile of stones, the splash coming up, and the little bees there on the rock. This is a top view of the same thing, showing the creek coming down and into sort of a wider area. The purple zone there just is going to indicate where the splash, where the wet rocks are. And most of the bees were right there at the edge of that splash zone. There'd be 20 to 30 bees in a group right here on wet rocks and a few over on the side. But for some reason, most of them were kind of congregated in that area. Don't know why. So that's zoomed out. And you notice in my notes here, it's just sort of a, a loose diagram. I started to get in a little bit more. This is a drawing of a side view of the rock with bees walking around on the top of it, licking the rocks. And from that, you can get a sense of how close the bees were to each other. So the bees are kind of brushing up shoulder to shoulder, coming in and out, and um, sometimes congregating in little groups as they were licking on the rock surface, others kind of going out on their own. Now, we'll zoom in. That's a close-up of the bee and when I looked at it at this range, I discovered that they were the front two pairs of legs, they were pulling water. They were taking their feet and, and stroking the surface of the wet rock in front of them. I figured that they were pulling water towards their tongue. You could see their tongue came down, and as they would slowly walk across the face of the rock, their tongue would drag on the surface of the rock. They also kept their antennae down. So both antennae were down, touching the rock surface. Tongue, antennae, all down. Feet, front feet, pulling that water towards them. Finally, down here, I've got a close-up of the head of the bee. Front view, side view, showing the tongue coming down from the front, the antennae curving around. Here is a side view of the same thing, showing how the tongue sort of curls back as they crawl that way along the rock. If you Lastly, a few other kind of big picture notes here. I'm noticing that I also saw one hummingbird, one wasp, two red-eyed flies, but no other critters were coming to the water. Lots of honeybees, 100 degrees. Why was nobody else coming to the water here? Why were the bees so active doing that? There's something going on here that I don't understand. And that's fun for me as a scientist. When I start to kind of get onto mysteries like this. Why is it that coming to the water was so important for the bees? And other species really were not coming in. There's something going on here, something else for me to explore in the future. And that's how I get, I get better at being a naturalist, get better at being an observer. Today, I intentionally zoomed in, zoomed out, and this is what I discovered. It was a good day.
So your nature journal challenge for today is to find an object or phenomenon that catches your interest and curiosity and to document and describe it in your nature journal. However, I want you to be intentional about using all three levels of focus to help you see more. So for part of your observations, zoom in, get really close and see what sorts of details you see at that range. Then explore part of what you see at life size, document and describe those observations in your journal. And finally, get back further to zoom out away from your subject and see what you notice there. By intentionally including all three levels of focus and observation, you give yourself the opportunity, the possibility of seeing new things, things that you otherwise would have missed. This is a strategy that you can apply in every other nature journal page that you make. I hope you enjoyed exploring nature with us today. My name is John Muir Laws, and this is the Nature Journal Connection. Join me next week for more tips, strategies, and techniques to improve the way that you see the world and develop as a nature journaler. Thank you. Do -do.